do you get into the elf business? Oh, they need some non-elves to do some dirty work for them, hmm? I don't know why you'd be hired about that's in a wrinkle ward. Yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, be careful out there. There's a bunch of elves running around the woods playing war or something. You wouldn't want to get shot. They're pretty good archers. There's like the the shittiest eatingest of the shitty eatingest <laughs> grins of like Yeah. Excellent archer. <laughs> you want to go play elf tag. Uh, <laughs> Especially with your new shields. Your new... Well, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the rats have arrow catching shields. <laughs> uh Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good to meet you, ghost. Takes your hand, and then is like scurrying away, like trying to. Edric, get out of here! <laughs> the general just sort of waves his little baton, <laughs> <laughs> like he had anything to do with your scurrying. <laughs> um, the imperial uh, minister was kind of like starting to get up as you scurry by. He... Well, we 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 whoa, we're doing the whole like. Ooh, yep. Just... Yep. <laughs> Ooh, can't see me, <laughs> the John Cena. <laughs> yep. Uh, he send he sends the uh, the squire to go do something, uh, and then the two of them shuffle forward and they're talking back and forth. Ooh. Uh, what you, language are they speaking in? Uh, you can see they are speaking in Imperial Common, um, and the Imperial Administrator is showing him um, something about an arcane, how to pronounce a particular arcane sigil to gain more oomph from the magical sigil. And they're, they're talking about magic stuff. Hey. How, how very interesting. I... I've got, I have I don't have a spell book myself that has a particular power to it aside from the spells within. Yes, I see. Yes, if you prepare from that spell book, you can empower one of your evocation spells. The spell I Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Barnabas. Yeah, you just take it off the prone condition. And, yeah. Just nerdlingering it up over here yeah. with the nerds. <laughs> Am I to understand that based on some power of your spell book, it increases the power of your spell casting? Oh, yeah. pardon me. Professor Barnabas Darby, Arcane Academy. Yeah, they they were on the verge of annoyance, <laughs> uh, of being annoyed when when you until you had um, introduced yourself. Give me a diplomacy check. All right. Thirty nine. Professor, is it? That form. I'm. Retired, going on different ventures now, but I am that are making a return to academia. Imperial Administrator Panaton Kilroy. A pleasure. Please. And he ships over. Yeah, Barnabas will have a seat with these guys. To what do I owe the pleasure of sharing some time with the professor? Well, I'm curious, is it rude magic? It is not rune magic. But my eye be privy to your secrets. I have a few of my own to share if you care. Give me a knowledge arcana. He actually passes the book to you and you notice that the wizard to your left is actually getting antsy about you touching the book. Knowledge arcana? Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh... No wonder I can't find knowledge. Is that's Mark? Is it linguistics to detect forgeries, or is it perception? Uh, it's linguistics. I I think it, uh to detect. I think it's no. It's it's uh, linguistics. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Arcana, I will take 10, and that gives me 43. Um, this is one of the volumes of a book. A self-named evoker that saw himself as the best evoker ever. Uh, and the power of this volume, you're pretty sure you remember, allows someone to empower one of their evocation spells per day if they prepare that evocation spell from this book. Ah, one of the volumes of Evoke. Very nice. You are learned. Yes, there are a number of subjects, but um, the arcane is one of my preferences. Yes, uh, like he hands I, the book back. Uh, yeah. so he... <laughs> uh, my spell book, please. Yes. As an imperial administrator, we do see much of the empire and occasionally have the opportunity to acquire interesting things that further our wizarding arts. You're not a wizard, are you, Mr. N not as such. Uh, sadly, I was blessed with the curse of sorcery. Ah. Though I did attend bardic school for a time. Wasn't much for singing and dancing, though. Get me. I see. And have you registered? Of course. He is a professor of the college. He must have registered. Unless you've recently discovered your sorceress powers. No, it's been over a decade now I've been registered. Well over. Tell me, my current vocation is um, tenuous at best. Do you find your job rewarding? I mean, I am interested in a job with travel. Do you like to count? Says <laughs> the Imperial Knight Officer behind you. It's the thing. There's there's a roll of eyes from the Imperial <laughs> Wizard, uh, the Wizard, who's just like, oh, this is a joke that they probably <laughs> always tell. Um, the the uh, the man who you're talking to um, uh, to your right uh, just grits his teeth at that. Um, yes, son, I do like to count, and you should not be jealous of those that can do what you cannot. <laughs> the two soldiers start <laughs> chuckling. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't say anything uh, when when the when Penitent just raises two two figures for him to to uh, 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 cutting short his retort. He returns to his book, and you recognize that he uh, the guy with the glasses is reading a. Holy Canon of the Five Face God. What chapter? <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to you. There's, there's a smirky grin from the uh, from the Imperial Administrator Wizard. I suppose it is not my first choice if I were to go back and meet my 16 year old self and tell them that I am using my wizardry to count things and people I doubt <clears throat> the conversation would go very well mind you I'd probably club my 16 year old self over the side of the head several times for mistakes I made at that Hey, I, I hear that. <laughs> Fulfilling enough, I do my part for the Imperium. All right. Being <laughs> a wizard is most expensive. Count yourselves amongst the lucky to be a sorcerer. Yeah, oh, some benefits, I suppose. Hmm. Well, gents, I will let you get back to your... Um... Do stay. He actually puts a thing, hand on your shoulder. Do stay registered as you uncover new circles of spells and powers. Make sure that your paperwork is up to date. 
Oh, bro, of course. How could I possibly forget? <laughs> He's forgotten now for I don't know how many levels. Some of my favorite biz visits are to those delinquent sorcerers that have failed to mention their progress. Right. It's where we end up with beautiful things like these books. That is fascinating. Maybe there are some benefits to your job then. I couldn't imagine being a professor, especially of something that you do not practice. Well, actually, uh, my main class that I taught was uh, planner configuration. Uh, you know that stuff. Interesting. Were well, I to go back, I would go back to be a wizard myself. Try the best I could be a conjurer. A conjurer, do you tell? Well, use the planes and how they work, I find fascinating because. Blah, 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 right. blah, uh, You're going to try to out nerd the, uh, the wizard? Give me yep. a uh, the, the, knowledge plane. The actuarial wizard. Yep. Yeah, um, I will take one of my eight twenties for the day, for knowledge planes, and that'll give me a he goes, fifty-one <laughs> plus uh, inspiration point. <laughs> he goes from he's going to interject and then fifty-four. I don't believe you to actually. That's a okay. You lot, and now he's just staring off in his face, <laughs> nodding. <laughs> I see, Professor. He's trying to conjure your name again. Darby, you said. Yes. Pleasure meeting you, Professor Darby. You've given me something to think about. Likewise, uh, Mr. Kilcroy and... Um... Kilroy. Oh, sorry. It looked like... Oh, I got a smudge on my screen. <laughs> sorry. <that's> my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a, name, a smudge on your name tag. Oh, there's a smudge on my ear, I couldn't quite... This wizard was only half listening, he was going back to the book that he that he wants, that he's obviously now studying. Oh, enjoy the rest of your trip. Mm. <laughs> oh, and congratulations, that is quite a volume. Quite a collector's volume. Yes, isn't it? Barnabas is jealous, but he is not about to steal some yep. stuff unless he should die. <laughs> Likely stolen <laughs> by that renegade sorcerer. <laughs> it's like a... uh, uh, Barnabas gets to... actually no, hang on. Barnabas gets to his seat. What are you doing in my seat? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna scooch over. He's gonna wave you in. Okay. By this point in time, the bounty hunters return from the washroom, looking looking kind of a. a a, a very sickly pale uh, 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 look, and he just sits down. He he looks around. He like looks up to see where Mord is. Fuck your rules. <laughs> he, he gets up and he checks on he checks on the chains, and um, uh, the half giant says, "Want some?" He he smushes the ha the half of the uh, uh, blueberry muffin that remained and just sort of leaves it on the on on the uh, on the seat. <clears throat> so, uh, don't you need to take a shit right now? Don't you feel it like burgling, gurgling, coffee and donuts? In the zoomy, and why would that be? Get some air in the shitter, you know, some nice shit air. Smell the shit wind. Check the vent. First stall. Oh, no. present. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. Uh, I gotta go. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> he gives a. He gives you kind of like a sideways, dirty look, but a smirk at the same time. It's like, <laughs> uh, he's not right, and I'm just moving him quickly. <laughs> The ghost is going to go hop over to where Junker was. Junk is giving him shit about talking to a girl. <laughs> ghost is saying, no, he didn't, which is just making it worse. 
Uh, yeah, uh, Barnabas will go to the crapper and... Okay, I'm just looking up something. Um, you guys are making me decide what the... What is the sword? It could, be... it could just be a nice sword. I didn't check if it was magic. I went, you left... Hey, you hit a thing in your room that's not supposed to be there. It disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I did this, I stole a pair of underpants. <laughs> <laughs> Which ghost was contemplating giving to the noble lady? <laughs> <laughs> Here's some pants. Here's some lazy human sized underpants. <laughs> <laughs> we can turn it into a parka. <laughs> No. What's the uh, like little house on the prairie <clears throat> style hair things? The the, the pigtail braids. The, the bonnet. The, the bonnets. The oh, call the bonnet. The the little yeah. hood thing. They if you were you yeah, it's a bonnet. The bonnet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, you go back to the washroom, uh, to the one that Ghost um, told you to go to. Okay. And what are you doing when, when back there? Um, he closes the door, locks it, checks the vent. Okay, okay there is a uh, the beautiful pommel of a obviously magical uh, scimitar that's visible in the vent <laughs> once you remove the vent. All right. Ah... <laughs> uh... Do a, try and do a quick ID without the spell identification. Sure. Oh, detect magic. Yeah, uh, with detect just detect magic. Yeah. Uh, What's he doing in the shitter? Oh, he's identifying something. <laughs> <laughs> he. What is this? He got a twenty-eight on his to identify on his identification. 28. Okay, uh, this thing minor magical rune. It is a plus one scimitar, but it has three other property runes on it. In that! <laughs> the first one is throwing. The second one is returning. And the third one is spell hurling. That sounds awesome. I'm assuming it's not vomiting spells. Oh, Chagam, I love this thing. It's my blingy sword of chop your head off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, there was a there was a boon in the tank a while back that I, I had not spent, and we're going to consider when you pick up the plus four weapon that boon is part of uh, part of that. Fuck yeah. So, Amagus can throw a spell hurling weapon to deliver a touch spell. So you could, like, whip a shock and grasp through it. That's no, awesome. Those, those Nagas are going to be pissed. <laughs> it's through spell strike, so it's they're likely there's likely a mage amongst them. Based on how they're talking to each other, I'm guessing it's actually the lady. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you know that this is an impressive weapon. You also know that you could probably break up the runes and you know spread the love around to different weapons. Um, throwing makes makes a non-throwing weapon a thrown weapon with a range. Uh, returning makes it return to your hand. Back to you. And then oh, spell hurling uh, is specific for magi. Yeah. Okay. Um... 
can he take the runes off here, or does that no, require no, work? No, that requires the the rune craft. Okay, yeah, all right. He, he, the sword to. goes in the hat. Yeah, <laughs> that requires key game balance NPC that like ever gets shot by a cannon from a long way away if it ever gets too crazy. <laughs> uh, you you slide the thing into your hat. Yet yeah, the the scimitar is just you can dangle it in, uh, yeah. and. Um, You're you're in the washroom. Yep. And then he has an XP bubble appear above his head. <laughs> <laughs> Secondary mission accomplished. <laughs> nice. Um. Yeah. He uh, he gets up, uh, goes back to his seat. Okay. And uh, and as he uh... you, you pass by the uh, the bounty hunter and you can see he's looking really ill. He's rubbing his temple and he's uh, got his mouth open. You can see a little bit of like drool kind of coming out of his mouth. I gives him a tap. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're yeah. right, am I? Uh, something I ate. Don't worry. It's all part of the job. Taps his gun. All right. As he passes by, um, oh, I didn't mean to land on. Uh, <laughs> Jump on his lap. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> leans over and kind of. Uh, you, you get a hello from the Zumi the Ghost. That will no, be you, a nice you, bonus for you later on. <laughs> you get a hello from Jemna <laughs> as as you walk by. Hi. Oh, hello. Sense motive? Where the fuck is she talking to me? I don't know. <laughs> sure. She's just nice. She's convinced she's just a nice girl riding the train who might be good for making profit in the future stealing shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, she's eyeing you up for something. More is a friend of mine. Yeah, wrinkle for it. Yeah, you're their Poindexter leader. Well, you don't look Poindexter-y. Yeah, it's because I drink too much. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I drink enough that I make crazy decisions. Like when someone tries to steal from me, I have Mort and his buddies say do crazy things like bring him to the washroom and throw him down the toilet. <laughs> I pay to see that. No, you just might. <laughs> <laughs> you have a nice trip now. <laughs> she she sniffs with her gnomish nose. Whiskey is what she says. <laughs> She's she goes back to and then and then you whisper to ghost that there's a, a bonus in that for you. Yeah. Uh, I actually like train rides. <laughs> Jaga oblivious to all the things that are going it's a, on. Just a, it's a massage chair. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's, he's got people seat. come by with food. For you. <laughs> uh, yes, this, there appears to be all sorts of interesting people on the train. <laughs> Jaga says he turns back to his own little world. He then sticks his hand on top of the thing and he's talking to Los in the jar and <laughs> feeding, feeding, feeding bread to the duck and nipping, nipping at future meals <laughs> that he will have to replace somehow. Oh, Grakul, uh, uh, Yes? You didn't uh, tell us, um, what you intend to do with the night sheriffdom? What were you thinking now that you had some time away from from Foundry? Terrors. I wanted to have an alliance with the uh, dojo and have the students uh, run the dep deputized students as be part of the night watchman. That way I can continue to travel with you. And do these fun of excursions. Or, I'll just hear me out here. You could just let the menace be. And they would let you be. And then there would be no um, problems. Until I get a complaint from the business about the menace. And I have to do something about it. No, that's the thing. You're just acting like you have to. 
But it's not really your responsibility. <laughs> uh, I do feel responsible for them. My master was very caring for them. I uh, keep his spirit alive forever it may be. Yeah. Doobie goes, that spirit's fucking dead, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the zoom, you don't tell him that. You make it sad. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying you can make your life much less complicated if you just sort of um, accept the fact there are some things you cannot control. I'm aware I will not be able to fix and, and save a game you. And a Never. gang of cutthroat and thieves is likely going to be one of those things. I do not wish to control them or even be part of them. Oh, but you do. That's what you're doing. Don't you see? Shit. <laughs> All right. It, then, it, on our return, I'll tell them to go fuck themselves. Ah, no good lad. Or, hear me out here. You kick all their asses. Just in a row. To and what end? <laughs> And then what? If we, another another gang would come in if they do not take power. I didn't say kill them. I said kick their ass. For what purpose? Why don't we... To take their shit, I see. Yes. Look, here's the problem. You're working them too much. You don't know who's going to come in and take over. Precisely. He needs, this is, this is an Izumi and Junkers, he needs, face all melted, he needs. Practice, practice one. Fucker needs a practice one. What are you two chattering about? Chugger still hasn't won an Izumi. <laughs> He's saying that Grackle should probably take his master's blade, rebuild it, and make it merciful, because that's the spirit of his master. Then he can use the merciful spirit of his master to beat all their asses without actually killing them. Oh, teaching yes. them to respect Grackle's master's spirit bat. That is a good idea. Oh, yes. Yeah, you that could, you could into submission, whatever works, I suppose. Yes, yes. What a wonderful idea, Grackle. You could beat people into submission and make fun of them. I love it. It is master spirit. <laughs> Ch Chaga. Chagas might have been at the receiving end of a merciful stick. Or, <laughs> <laughs> um, again... Just let it go. Let it go. I suppose you could take prisoners that way instead of chopping them in half. And do what with them? I don't know. Ask them where the treasure is. My, and my problem usually is uh, if I cut, I'm not sure how deep it's going to go. Sometimes their head fall off. Sometimes it just hangs there. Yeah, that's what happens when you slice at the neck. <laughs> Uh, Bar yeah, that's <laughs> Barnabas, we should discuss this evening when there aren't so many people around um, what it is that we're going to do out here in the woods. Yeah, we're not discussing that right now. Yes, yeah. Just everyone stay sober. <laughs> Go I'm just checking Ghost's bluff skill. <laughs> I, I think he's got some. <laughs> you shut your mouth. He's, he's got some, yep. Yeah, we're not talking out. about that to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and how good is that plus skill? <laughs> plus eleven. <laughs> so you can't beat Barnabas. <laughs> Why'd <did> you do? <laughs> 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 what have you done? That's yeah. not the face of an Azuma who's done nothing. I know what nothing looks like, and that's not <laughs> it. I didn't talk to the pretty girl. <laughs> Are you talking about the... Oh, for fuck's sake. She's eyeing us up for something. Yeah, she's a thief. 
Oh, so let's go tell the thief what we're going to do. Are there any other pretty girls we need to worry about? Who the pretty girls on the train? <laughs> Looking around. <laughs> Part of us kind of look at each other like, you fat fuck. <laughs> you should be helping me here. <laughs> Chugga, Chugga smiles at Part of us's look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one uh, asked too many questions without giving up anything of herself. Do you not trust that? Yeah, let's be keeping an eye on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm safe up here with the gauntlet of my friends around me. I think Duckin and I are going to take it up. <laughs> There's a fucking shark. <laughs> <laughs> he, he clasps his hands over top of his, his rotund belly and just happily snoozes away. It's amazing how upright he remains while sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the parts of the plate armor he's wearing today kind of keeps them all kind of kind of compact. The side is upright. You can do the x-ray, the bone structure back to the Yes. Uh, <laughs> just uh, enough flesh around to be here. <laughs> oh. uh, yep, the duck doesn't nap. It just sort of waddles around at his feet for a while and um, and actually starts to wander. Uh, fuck off, lunch. It goes hiding underneath. It actually came up. You you think it was talking in bird speak to your familiar because your parrot kind of shot out of your like uh, out of your parrot leg and looked at it. <laughs> Get back in there. <laughs> All right, after the moment of levity, uh, you reach the doldrum period of the trip after everyone's had their caffeine and sugar and uh, it just, uh, any of the initial polite conversation has died down uh, and the, 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 day, the day goes on. All right, I'm going to take this particular lull. This is train, uh, uh, there's a dimension chat that, oh, train scenes. <laughs> Even if it's, it's just traveling, people, and there's a bunch of NPCs, <laughs> and none of it really matters normally because you just—it's like a normal train ride. You're gonna see these people again. It's a train. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys have fun. Uh, uh, Saturday, right, Mark? I'm not here again on Saturday. Stuck. All right. <laughs> but then you got me for the next two. So. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll talk to you guys uh, later. Yeah. See everyone. Sounds Peace. good. Peace. See you, man. I might be able to play for a little bit on Saturday. I should say that because I'm working day shift, but I can't. I can't play late. Gotcha. And I'll and I'll be late because I only get off work at seven. Good to know. Uh, that's for our time, my time. So, uh, you travel out of the South Liriad Woods, although you can still see some woods in the uh, in the distance to the north and to the west. Uh, you pass through an area that looks like it has been blessed by some. Uh, agrarian deity, uh, seas and seas of of summer wheat. Uh, as far as you can see, um, uh, all around the train, you can see that there are people out in the fields uh, doing the last harvest. Um, it's beautiful and sunny for that portion of the trip. You begin to get a little bit closer to the Liriad Woods again. And then you're almost at Hacksbridge. Is there anything else you want to do on the train or someone you want to speak to um, by that point in time? People have gotten up and gone to the washroom and back. Uh, the bounty hunter has not left his left his bench. Okay. Um, yeah. No. Uh, not really. No. No. Uh, Barnabas is good. I think Mort's good. <clears throat> Apparently bounty hunting's full of rules, so he's not down with that <laughs> all right the uh the train reaches a, it's uh a one of its stops uh it starts to slow down you do travel um across a very large trestle bridge which is hacks bridge 
there is a small community there. The general is is talking someone's ear off about how the troops were arrayed in some in some pitched battle that happened here a while ago. Um, Three hundred men apparently against two thousand goblinoids, and uh, they sure make a they sure made a mess of that horde. And you know, kind of he he's relaying to anyone who's listening uh, in his old man crotchety way about how how the Imperium won the day. <clears throat> And by extension, him. Um, you do slowly roll into the Hacksbridge Station. Uh, at this point in time, um, as you guys were um, starting to shuffle out and receive your weapons back from uh, uh, from Deputy Drulk, you did notice that before you had reached the station, that Jamna had disappeared to the washroom, presumably. Okay. Uh, and as you guys are disembarking the train, uh, you can hear some shouting, a gun, Please. a gun go off, um, maybe some more shouting, and then uh, running out of the train yard is the big blue. Uh, skinned half giant. He's just booking it into the into the town. All right. Well, looky there. What the fuck? You, Ghost is. He laughs a little bit. Well, I guess I'm a better bounty hunter than he was because he didn't get away from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're. You you did a good job guarding. Says Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> he slaps Mort's he slaps Mort's pauldron and then looks at his hand like how, how is Mort's armor that dirty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a bit of excitement and uh yeah there there's yelling and some people are coming to the train. Apparently the bounty hunter has been horribly injured. Uh and um I, I don't know if you guys are rushing to make it any of any of your business. Nope. Okay. Nope. <laughs> it is it is after sundown when you reach the village of Hacksbridge. It's basically a um a remote train station with a bunch of ramshackle buildings. Um it probably exists just to be a uh like a cargo uh dump um train hmm. stop. Uh if the train didn't come through here, this place may not exist. Uh, there is a beautiful river that does not look like it's in its flood season. Like it, uh, the river has receded from its uh, from its bank, uh, but it is still significant enough that you're glad that there's a bridge and that you've passed over it. Um, you do see that there's like a uh, there's an inn, a general store, and some stables, uh, as well as the train station in Hacksbridge itself. I think we will spend the night, given that we just. 12 hour trip so that's long enough okay uh and uh make arrangements at the stable for uh we'll see what we can rent or buy all right um the train doesn't stay long there's some cargo that gets unloaded and some cargo that uh that that gets loaded um no other passengers that you're aware of aside from the half giant brute which made a made a run for basically the the bushes uh um gets off the train um the bounty hunter doesn't seem to emerge from the train oh yep there he is they sent some people onto the train and it looks like they're carrying him out on a stretcher and <laughs> the stretcher is covered by a blanket Ooh. oh yeah i'm definitely better bounty hunter than that <laughs> he didn't kill me <laughs> Are the rats wondering about what his weapons? <laughs> go, go. <laughs> they would be too. They would be. <laughs> Ghost is. <laughs> Ghost is just laughing away at this. <laughs> the train rides off. Uh, you guys, it sounds like you went to the inn first to check everyone in. Uh, yet you do find a common room. Unfortunately, you guys are all going to be sharing the same room. Um, it does have some curtain dividers and some, like, <sighs> some old lumpy cots. Uh, 
it, it looks like there might be other people who have rented out some of the rooms ahead of you and you're kind of left with a with a single room at least it's clean um is the best thing that you could say about this this room there's a leak in the roof and an old moldy tub and some beds okay. with curtains uh not the worst place you've been definitely not the best but there's a there's a smell to it that reminds you barnabas of like bunking as a university student <laughs> <laughs> it's a familiar funk in there <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we check in. Uh, Barnabas returns the weapons to everybody. Okay. Nice. Uh, Barnabas, when you go to the Outfitters, uh, you notice that there is a, um, a large wagon train that looks like some people are already, uh, preparing. Uh, the, uh excuse, the excuse me, folk. Yeah, I'm going to move to a different map at this point. Yep. Uh, we'll we'll take one last look at the map as to where you're going. So, you're in Hacksbridge, yeah. And Forest Top is in a hilled area at the center of the Lyriad Woods. These are sixty mile hexes. You're guessing if there is a road, which you think there is. Um, it's a three day walk. Okay. <clears throat> you you've never been up this far north, uh, I don't think, Barnabas. You think you've spent your life probably not. It, probably if you, spent if most you, of his life in town. If you've been to the if you've been to the capital before, you probably didn't stop in like little towns like this. No, <laughs> uh, uh, didn't didn't stray far from the train station. So you, you've never been to Forest Top. You're excited to go there because you know that there is a museum in Forest Top. The museum concentrates on Sylvan and Elven culture. Cool. Yep. He would definitely take that in. Uh, so the train had left. You guys are in Hacksbridge, and I'm going to change the map to a different spot. First, I'm going to grab your tokens. Copy. Uh, Grackle, are you with the Barnabas when he goes looking for horses? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sword Marty, I'll handle this. <laughs> Alright, so Grackle and Barnabas, I'm just on the conversation layer, yep. uh, go yep. off to look for horses. Uh, and you can see a um, a caravan. The caravan, well, actually, like horses, carts. Yeah, like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, there are three um, uh, vehicles. Uh, one looks like a cargo wagon, quite large size. One looks like a um, an older style coach, and another actually looks like an armored coach. <laughs> Uh, and you can see that there are some um, armed wagon hands or caravaneers that are basically packing things up. It looks like they're getting, it's like the type of activity you'd expect, like getting ready for the next day or maybe an early morning departure. There, okay, is, yeah. there is a man that is um, got a salt and pepper beard. Uh, he's six inches taller than the rest. Um, he, he, he looks, I don't know, maybe early forties, mid forties, um, kind of, uh, road weathered. He definitely is the man in charge. Um, they look like they are pulling a cargo wagon into a, um, into a warehouse and they're making sure that the warehouse door is closed Four people have gone inside the warehouse and you, you can hear some grunting and groaning as they might be moving things in be careful you don't want to get any of that on you uh yes sir um uh, i don't know if you're interacting with these guys or are you uh going he's to... gonna just go speak to the guy in charge <clears throat> okay uh, uh and he'll get his attention uh, as as i'm guessing they're looking protective of their gear and uh 
Yeah, cargo. you you can hear the hired thugs, uh, or you could you could see the the tokens I've labeled as hired thugs, um, um, kind of leering at you as you're walking. Uh, they don't stop you, but they stop what they're doing to at least kind of hear what you're saying. Um, this man turns around and acknowledges you. He walks up to you. Hello there. What can I do for you? Well, I don't mean to interrupt, but I did notice, of course, you are packing a caravan. I was wondering if perhaps your caravan was going near or to Forest Top. What's it to you? Well, if that were the case, uh, I have uh, five more than capable uh, men capable of guarding your uh, cargo. Uh, this is Grackle. He would be one of them. Grackle, show him your sword thingy. <laughs> Yeah, menacing sword play. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at Grackle. Shh. Uh, he 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 he's like, eh, f fine. Okay, so what would... is menacing swords play? <laughs> As a swift action, you can just demoralize uh, with a intimidate swift action. Sure. I try to intimidate. Okay, give me uh give me a roll. Uh twenty-four. Alright, alright. You can poke someone's eye out with that. I'm what's, better than that. What's your name, fancy man? Well, my name is Barnabas Darby. He, he waits until Grackle puts his sword away to approach. Barnabas extends a hand. <laughs> Vigo. Vigo LaRue. A pleasure. I've got enough hands. We we know these roads. We can look after ourselves. Um, how many people are you traveling with? Oh, I've got this bloke here and four other. Are there any archers among them? or? Uh, they do have crossbows. One of them's quite the archer. Hmm. Quite beneficial uh, on a caravan, wouldn't you say? All right, where are you headed? Forest top. Well, no shit. We seem to be heading in the same direction, friend. Well, that is quite convenient. It is, and he's he's look. He you could tell that he's looking for any signs of subterfuge from you. Um, At this point, he's not lying. So. Okay. Hmm. Not looking for guards, but if you wish to, um, we can make room in the coach. You could ride there in style. Well, that would be most appreciated. Uh, we have coin for the trip. What do you know? I've got an empty pouch right here. How much would you like? Five of you renting the coach. Thirty gold. Done. Barnabas pays him right now. <laughs> okay. Ah. He looks you up and down and notes that you have a very impressive bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got one rule though. Uh, okay. What is your rule? A second. I can get you within spitty, spitting distance of the city. Don't worry, you'll be able to find your way there on your own. The rule is, don't go poking around my goods. And we'll leave you and yours alone. I think we can adhere to that. Break the rule. There's a lot of forest road for us to get into all sorts of trouble. Understood. He glances at Grackle. He he doesn't want to he doesn't want to fight Grackle. <laughs> Us. <laughs> and uh what time would we be leaving in the morning? Early earlier the better. 
How long is the trip? It's about three days. It's about three days. I'm hoping that we can make it in two. I like that plan. A a three-day walk. We've got four horses per wagon, as long as you're not lugging around anvils. Well, we have Chug, but <laughs> he's about two ways to angle us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see you when you meet him. All right, the armored. We the, will see you the in ar- the morning. The armored coach is yours. We will see you in the morning. Okay. He if you leave it out he, yeah, he, he pays me. if you leave him out we can have it packed and ready to go and you're ready to go sun up sun up it is all right we'll see you tomorrow okay he doesn't say anything he goes back to the men and like chucks to one of them the pouch who then uh we're gonna move those bags that we've got from the uh, from the carriage, and you can see some of them are groaning. Ah, oh, we all gotta pack into one, you know, like they they some of them were looking forward to maybe riding in the coach, but uh, <laughs> um, if you check back an hour later, they have moved all of their cargo and uh, and belong uh, personal belongings off of the armored coach. Okay. Yes. Uh, we go back to our common room. Yep. All right, we have secured passage with a caravan. Headed okay. to, as he put it, as uh, the man in charge put it, within spitting distance of the sea. Oh. Uh, 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 yes, should we, we expect? Yes, we ourselves a little carriage to ride in. What should we expect when we get there? Trees and elves. Uh, does well, anyone... That's a smart ass answer. What's uh, what should we expect when we're there? Um, some vi- uh, some very big trees, and a city that is built into and on a tree. You you're eager to see it for yourself. Well, I've only heard that's stories, too. but city itself is built both in and on a great tree. It should be classic elven architecture. You don't see it around imperial parts. Oh, there is also something else. He looks at the rats. Whatever you do, do not go in there and look at his things. What? Us? Yes, it is very important that you do not uh, go in and uh, look at his uh, supplies that are being built. Yes. Oh, you know what? Just this right. one, just leave it be. Right. No, exactly. no, no. Quickly in your fucking nose. <laughs> it was itchy. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this time, just leave it be. But Believe me. It will not be touched. We're so you got your this. bonus <laughs> on the tray. Well, we got a magic sword. Yeah. And, and you, you know, the big that. blue guy escaped. <laughs> If you should be caught going through their things, it's going to be on you. What, you think those assholes with the, with the crossbows could actually shoot those things? Yeah, probably not, but... <laughs> don't want to be the ones, hey, didn't you leave with a caravan that was murdered? No, that's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something's up with them. They're up to something. Uh, they're moving something, all right. But as we don't long know... as it is not alive... But until we know what it is and who they're moving it for and who they're moving it to, best keep our hands off. The rats are thinking, and how much they got paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. You just let me know. I'll see what I can find out. All right. Um, you guys spend a minorly uncomfortable evening in the uh, in the roadside inn it's one of those nights where it's like i'm glad i don't i i can't sleep in because this mattress sucks <laughs> yeah you, you guys get a quick basically a quick uh, a quick sleep cycle in um and then busily prepare yourselves the next day everyone's a little bit tired and a little bit grumpy when you uh head down into um the caravan 
you notice um, somebody new with the caravan. Ooh. There's a there's a man talking to some of the soldiers. He is like two feet taller and a foot wider than the uh, uh, than some of the thugs, and they're he's making a joke and they're laughing. Who? Uh, it's the half giant that you had rescued. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Let's get his token. I have it somewhere. What do you mean the axe isn't big enough? Oh, I could swing it bigger. That's the biggest axe we got. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, bigger. And then and they're laughing. Yeah, yeah, sure, you're just compensating for something. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Quit slack John around. Uh, Vigo comes over to you. Morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you. Is this all of you? Uh, this is a lot of us. Okay, he takes a like a noticeable count of you. Um, he, he looks around your uh, around your others. He doesn't say anything beyond that. Um, he introduces two thugs that will be driving the carriage for you. Okay. All right, you mind? Um, in the zoom, he says to go. You want to ride up top? You notice that some of the porter they're also acting like porters they do mm -hmm. sling some of your stuff on top but there's definitely room for the ghost and rat to ride on top of the wagon it's only if they want to it's front this doesn't yeah all right yeah all right i'd like to ride up top if that's all right i'm sure you wouldn't mind a couple of arches up there that's fine all right let me know if there's anything you need from us the wagon that they had wheeled into a warehouse uh, is covered, and there's something really big and round underneath the covering. And they've done a really good job at strapping down the uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, canvas covering, so you can't quite see what's in the wagon. Like big barrels or something? Like why would they go to such trouble that they're actually trying to hide what the barrels are? Okay. Uh, Vigo's looking at you as he sees you're looking at it. Any problems? No. No problems. Chaga gets into the coach. The coach. <laughs> Anvils. <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> Told you. Right, he begins to go bark orders and you can hear Ghost and Junker talking about, Hey, there's that guy that we saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barnabas really just doesn't want to be seen. He doesn't want there to be a fight that breaks out. Mort, you, you see the guy. Ha! Hey! Yeah! Good running! <laughs> <laughs> he comes over. Vigo stops him and says something to him. Nah, there won't be any trouble. Unless they want them to be. Ha ha ha! He comes walking over. He's got a he's got a great axe over his shoulder. He seems to be uh, quite familiar with that type of weapon. You think he might be some sort of two handed fighter? Uh, you gotta fuck him up. <laughs> yeah, you gotta thanks your uh, your rat friend for giving me a muffin. <laughs> it was blue. <laughs> He he's, he slaps uh, he slaps Mort, Mort, Mort looks head. confused. Must have been some muffin. <laughs> yeah, the keys were inside. It was pretty easy to snap his head. Oh. Okay. Well, he got his gun off. I just kind of turned it around and shot himself in the gun. <laughs> <laughs> so you cheated the cheater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I started running, but then I saw these guys were uh, were 
you know, taken off, and uh, the little gnome girl uh, actually almost killed her. She snuck up on me and introduced me to that guy. Well, no, oh, the cute one. Yeah, <laughs> more I, to just in his armor. <laughs> like, yeah, I owe her some money now, I guess. Uh, Where is she? She's looking around. <laughs> oh, she, she, uh, she's back in the village somewhere, I guess, waiting for the train. Apparently, that's her thing. Riding on trains and causing trouble. Hey, so what are we going to find at this elf place? I've never been to an elf village before. Uh, smart guy says, um, big tree. <laughs> and nice. I, and I, and I and got a, a city and a tree. <laughs> and I got a big axe. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 uh, I, could, uh, I could wield an axe, like, three times as big. Really? Yeah. I come from up north. I'm, uh, frost giant blood. Oh. And, well, I'm Yeah, half, I heard of giants. Yeah, I'm yeah. a half giant. You know, spend half, spend half my life getting my ass kicked by giants. <laughs> I'm a part-time giant myself. It's, uh... <laughs> I... Nudges Grackle. <laughs> uh, uh, this'll do for now, I guess. Hmm. Probably gonna have to go talk to a dwarf smith or something like that. Apparently there's a bunch of dwarf smiths in this veil. Ooh, I hear dwarves are good. Uh, you know, with the smith. Yeah, good, good for smithing. Hey, any of you got any big weapons you want to trade for? I got this axe. Ah. Uh... We might actually. Barnabas, is, Barnabas pops his head out. Burby. Uh, let me have a look at that axe there. Yeah, it's pretty pretty shit. I, I found okay, it. So I found it in the wagon over there. It's just a reg, regular great axe. Regular axe. Oh, right there is a piece of shit. See, I'll take like it. You have no money. No. Uh. Fucking bounty hunter took all my shit. Yeah, I tend to do that. It's locked up in some building in back in Foundry. You know what building? We might be able to take care of that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I got lumped upside the head pretty bad a few times. What was his name? Who? This uh, bounty hunter and catch his name. Uh, Cliff, I think. Cliff. Yeah, I didn't get his last name. We weren't All friends. Right. This building. I wasn't gonna marry him. <laughs> you gotta get a shot to the arm. It hurts. Uh, it's not nice. He takes a step back and actually puts like mort between them. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, so. he looks at that. And doesn't. Yeah, so this building, you said it was in Foundry. Was it um, North Wall or South Wall? Uh, I, spent, I spent some days in a tower prison somewhere. Yeah, you know where that is. He, he, was, he was arrested by... He was stuck in the main jail. Uh, uh, okay, and that's where they took your things. Yeah. That's pity. Uh, they're just things. Hang on, I'm not... Just to say we're making friends. I'm gonna have a look to see if we have any large weapons that aren't magical. But I don't think we do. Uh... No. I don't think we have any cloaks or rings or anything like that. I think we've all got rid of it. No. We have a plus one large ransor, but I don't think... Uh... I think that's at the tower. Oh, that's at the, oh, that is at the tower. Unless you're carrying the... No, the... you're right. We're not carrying yeah. that. That's at the tower. Oh, he gets yeah, he a close comfort. That's, that is a sweet item. Ah, it's fine. I'll make do. Yeah. A little axe it is. <laughs> yeah, a little... Oh, I've wielded a big axe before. 
that's fantastic. More here sometimes wields a larger weapon as well. I know where I tell you, you're one of the guards. Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, uh, so Jam this... Jamna said that I should start, I guess, earning my keep. I gotta deliver some money back to her at some point. So this Jamna. Yeah, the tell you why she was helping you? Uh, she likes money. And how is she... How much are you paying her? I owe her, um, 3,000 gold coins. <laughs> Oof. Well, I wanted to get fucking free. You, you do too. I, you know, gladiatorial fighting sounds really fun and all, but fuck. And it's, apparently it's a corpse pile going on over there trying to figure out who's the best warrior. And then you get to go to some backworld to go fight a bunch of backworlders to see who's the best warrior. Who the fuck wants to do that for the, for the, uh, for the for the emperor's glory, fuck that! Magnus, <laughs> that's good thinking. <laughs> On another world, Magnus, I do. Fuck, there's a lot of things to do. Kill, fuck here, right on uh, on Volcanico. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, that's gonna take you some time to generate that funds for her. So, this, uh, Gemna, she, uh, friends with Vigo there? Uh, yeah. Uh, Vigo's some sort of merchant, I guess. Doesn't look like a merchant. No, I don't imagine he's, well, not your typical merchant. He's a fine gentleman, perhaps not. Yeah, well, apparently he's, he was waiting for something off the train, he got it, and, uh, now we're off to go see the elves or whatnot. <laughs> Gemna said this is probably the quickest way out of here. The uh, guards might not expect that I hired on so quickly with people I didn't know. <laughs> maybe yeah, she's, I imagine maybe she, not. Maybe she is worth 3,000 gold. Tell me. Uh, Gauros Thrym, was it? I didn't tell you my name. <laughs> oh. Sorry. What was your name again? <laughs> <laughs> Goros. In the name of my god. And that god would be... Thrym! The god of my people! Right, god of frost giants. Got it, yeah. Uh, Goros Thrym is he a name level character? Uh, not yet. Okay. Oh, Goros. Best of luck to you. Uh, you could give me a knowledge... Nature, history, maybe something like that. Uh, I will go with history, uh, take 10, and get a 41. Your take 10 is 41? Yes. That's kind of silly, huh? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, 41. I know I have notes for Gora somewhere. probably comes from uh, the north. There is a polar ice cap uh, far to the north and there are frost giants that are up that way. Up that way, yep. So tell me, did you come from the north? Yeah. What brought you this far south? Mm. It's shit up north. Yeah, a lot of ice and snow. Sounds chilly. Nah, hunting ain't good. Uh, my clansmen are a little rough. What? Uh, not enough game and stuff. Well, lots of sure. gob lots of goblins running around up there eating everything. You know, you could kill a goblin with two more spread out and spread up in their uh, in their place. 
Uh, that, that he looks at he looks at Mort and uh, Grago. That has actually not been our experience. They sort of leave a bloody mess. <laughs> Besides, our shaman says that we need to go out and. He points up at the sun. Mm -hmm. We need to turn off the light. Snuff it out. You want to put out the sun? Uh, that's what the shamans say. You know, shamans. Yeah, it's a bit of a tall task, ain't it? Yeah. But, get out of here and stamp out a few fires. Uh, some of the shamans think that fires mean lives. So, here I am, world. <laughs> Plenty of fires in Volcanica for us to go stamp out. Well, that there are. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you going to Elf Town? You gonna go crack some skulls together? No, not today. We're going to try and find someone. All right. Well, I'll be with those guys guarding whatever the fuck's in there. Uh, that didn't tell you. Nah, they said I shouldn't mess around with it. It'll burn you. Sorry, it it'll what? <laughs> It'll fucking burn you. Burn you. Oh. Hmm. Might be alchemy's fire. Or a little friggin' dragon. <laughs> little do they know I don't like fiery things. <laughs> yeah, best you not play with it then. Play with <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Looks like they're ready to go. I'm about about good. Getting away from the train tracks. Train tracks big trains. Trains bring Imperials. Imperials have guns. And I've had enough of fucking guns for a lifetime. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. Best of luck on your fugitive lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is that what I am now? <laughs> yeah, afraid so, mate. But I'm sure a man of your stature will... Not attract too much attention. <laughs> like, get caught within a month. <laughs> right. He's kind of flipping the axe around. Yeah. Because if they do. All right. Good luck. Okay. The, Looks like uh... Grackle. Yeah, one month. He's fucked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Get in our wagon. Yeah, you get in your wagon and you uh, and you take off. Um, the first day or so is just basically going up well tended forest uh, a forest road. Um, you do camp at the side of the road. They do push their horses quite far. Uh, you notice that in order to um, alleviate any of the force march damage that uh that was done that vigo actually pulls out a uh a case of potions and feeds the horses each an apple laced with cure light wounds what really yeah you, got, you, got, you guys rode like 12 12 hour day basically yeah but to feed each of the poor horses a potion that they must be getting paid a pretty penny to get there in a certain amount of time yeah, the, his hired yeah. thugs don't seem to, like, have really great equipment. Um, he doesn't have bad knives at his side. Like, they, they might actually be magical knives. Uh, none of them had an axe that seemed to please Goros Thrym. Okay. On the second day, uh, that is when you're going through a part of the forest where things turn a little bit violent. And I'm going to move your tokens to something called Forest Road. Okay. Oh, I need to grab the, the guy that you rescued that completely wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you guys were going to fuck with them. I didn't know whether you were going to fuck with them. Yes, I knew that something on that trade was going to be fucked with. I didn't know what. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an opportunity for you to fuck with a thing. <clears throat> Alright. Player visible. And then we've got 
forest road. Let me unfog. Cool. It's not exactly to scale, but the trees do are growing much larger. Um, um, many of them trying to outcompete each other for the bit of sunlight that is coming in along the forest floor. The first thing that happens that you realize uh, that things have gone kind of wrong is that the horses stop because there are a series of deadfalls. Ah, it's a sign. It's a problem. <laughs> that are blocking the way. Um, immediately when you guys stop, uh, there is a... a flurry of arrows that come from the trees. <laughs> Green and black fletched that begin to hit your caravan at two sides. There is a tremendous roar of some sort of dire great cat. Um, oh. Bad. That that jumps down from a tree. There is a strange bustling of mounds. At first, you thought when you had passed by them near the near the back, that these mounds were just like rotting vegetation. Apparently, they are uh, moving rotting vegetation, and you can hear um, perhaps spell casting happening within the woods. There are patches of grass that begin to grab at the horses and anyone who's on the ground alike. Ugh. And um, your caravan has been ambushed. Yeah! <laughs> XP meter, here we come. <laughs> All of you are kind of safe inside your little, your little uh, uh, inside your armored coach. Well, this uh, looks bad. Let's see how they fare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the the warriors are not faring well against the uh, against the onslaught of what you will realize later are renegade elves. Okay. And I think this, given the time, is a good it's place. It's perfect to... time to start combat. Initiative. No, I, th I think this is a good place to leave it uh, for good. next time. I'm good if you are on that. <laughs> are you, you guys? Yeah, I'm good to go. All right then. Oh my God, no! Don't be oh, those. Oh no! Shit sores. Oh shit. Green lion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the arrows are coming from up. It looks like there are like hunting stands up in the trees. No. <sighs> Well, that's Ghost's job. Good thing we can all fly, basically. There are some that are coming from down. There are two elves with swords that are flanking the, uh, the strangely green-colored cat. And higher up, there might be elementals in windy form. Oh, uh, no. Oh, these guys really want to... There's a lot of meat here. Oh, fighting druids and rangers in the woods is never good. It's always best to fight them in a city. <laughs> Where so much less damage can be done. Yes. Shit. Uh, okay then. Okay, El Syrian druids, El Syrian um, slayers, El Syrian archers. We've got the shambling mounds. We've got the Dire Tiger. Dire Tiger is bad news. Shambling Mounds are bad news. <laughs> Shambling Mounds are bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God 
be okay um we'll say that you have two rounds to prepare as as like things are happening around you you know that there's something going on <clears throat> okay uh barnabas will put up big hope Nice. Mort. Good. Oh. You to chin and long arms. Ah, uh, uh, good hope, Bart song. On the second round, Bart song. Second round, Bart song. Haste. Do we need uh, it now? I I would say if. I really need to take a bio break, so um, can you yeah, do right. Junker and Ghost um, spells? I do believe uh, Junker does have a haste. I'll be right back. Yeah, we'll check. It's <clears throat> probably going to cast Fly as well on... Uh... Yeah, Barnabas is casting Fly on himself. I've got a boomstick! Or mop. Uh, I have a flying mop. Freedom of movement. Fuck those things. Uh, ghost maybe has maybe ghost has a spell. Yes, I'm gonna say ghost casts haste and fly on himself. Like group haste. <laughs> yeah, like everyone gets haste. Okay, and he gets fly on himself. Uh, I don't know where here he is. It's gonna elves. There's no specific DR that he wants to push, so maybe uh, just make his bow plus four for pure damage. Or does that last for a round, or how long does that last for? What was? How long does what last for? His bow when Ghost um, puts. Like magic on his bow? Yeah. I think it lasts for like the fight. Plus four. Damage to hit damage. Fuck. I don't buy magus. Alright. Junker. Mm. Did he take his mutagen? I think so. Yeah. Mutagen and <sighs> this is one of those things where <clears throat> okay does does Junker understand what those shambling mounds are? Yeah, give me a knowledge nature for Junker. Alright. Junker. Knowledge nature. Oh, that's for the kit, so uh oh, so plus fifteen. Here you go. It's a 35. Yeah, Junker yells down, Shambles! Ah. Don't you. Fireball. Don't use electricity. Okay. Uh, do they grab? Yep. Okay, he's, cast, he's casting freedom of movement on himself. Yeah, he's Shambles, very grabby. 
Freedom of movement on Civ. And he took his mutagen. So. All right, let me draw the 30 foot radius, or sorry, 40 foot radius um, entanglements. <laughs> Gerald does a long arm. They don't seem to be affecting you inside the cart or ghost and junker on top of the uh, on top of the carriage, but they are grabbing at anything that is touching the ground. Okay. DC of the entangle is fifteen. There is just simply a, uh, a cacophonous cry of men being attacked, um, yells of confusion, horses um, uh, shrieking and whinnying, um, the the weird ropey sounds of the grass grabbing at wagon wheels and uh, at hooves and any of the hired thugs that have stupidly hopped down from the wagon benches to gain cover. Uh, you can see Goros Thrym uh, is basically crawling up onto the coach and lying flat. There you he's, go, bud. Uh, he's trying to gain cover from the archers on this side and then because these ones are firing from the ground. He's got cover from them. And uh, Vigo LaRue, you can see... Well, you saw a silhouette inside the wagon, and that silhouette disappeared. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Los comes out of his... Uh, 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 out of his uh, canister, and his two rounds of spells are... He has mage armor up while traveling. He's going to cast shield and... Can he be affected by haste? I think so, eh? He can. And good hope? Yes. Okay, he gets them. Alright, so haste and good hope. Cool. Mm -hmm. He casts... Shield and... Long arm? Long arm seems fun. Seems so one. Oh, what's the plan? Oh, defend us. Yeah, but there's going to be more than a plan than that. Uh, Chaga. Uh, he's got his tower shield out. Because we're riding a wagon, he did wear his full plate today. Chaga. Is going to cast Weapon of Awe on Grackle's Blade. Nice. You're a good man. Mort has wings, right? Mort has wings, yeah, he can fly. Okay, as much as he wanted to cast spells on himself, Chaga's going to cast um, Fly on Grackle. You know what? I will take it. Because I got a fucking broom, but I can't fly it too well, so. <laughs> Take that. Oh, that's right. You got your broom. I got my broom. No, yeah, use your broom. Uh, I can fly. All right, use he's going to cast. It, Chuck is going to cast fly on himself. That's a wise decision. That's, that's also what Barnabas cast on here. Grackle's like, yeah, yeah, wait, what the fuck? What? what? No, <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay, so a Grackle cast. Long arms, and he pulls his broom out. He's like, <laughs> what are we? What are we fighting first, is Lewis? Why don't you fight the things that are all fucking grabby? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. plant things. Uh, yeah, deal with it. 
the things I do for greatness. <laughs> <laughs> he goes he goes flying out towards the nearest plant thing. Uh, you learn by watching that the plant thing does have a reach of ten feet. It tries to slam down at Los and, I don't know, hits AC 26? Which I bad. No, Los has a better AC than that. Yeah. Los's AC with his um, improved decks from <clears throat> recent item uh, Mage Armor and Shield is 33. <laughs> So he dodges, he dodges uh, uh, the wavy hands and flies around to flank the thing. He doesn't have to get right up to it. Uh, and he'll, come on, Greco! Let's, let's carve some lettuce! These things will grab me. I cannot afford to do that. Lettuce, Greco, lettuce! I will go after the arches. <laughs> uh, you're yelling at a window. He's, he's just yelling into the woods. <laughs> come on, Greco! Fuck no! <laughs> So there's a bard song and a um... bard song. Good hope, haste. Okay, he's That's plus five to hit. He strikes the the plant creature. Um, and also four to damage, right? Uh, yeah, that would be plus four to damage as well. Okay, he yes. he stabs the one of the shambling uh, shambling mounds, and it looks like he does damage to it. As all sorts of ooze is coming out of it uh, for twenty two damage. Come on, he'll stab at it again. Unguard you, lettuce beast! Shambling mound is it's a high level spell. Uh, it... He's done forty four damage to the shambling mound. He oh. has he has bloodied it. Nice. You're not a match, fellows. I'm gonna have to deal with the druids and the casters. Fuck! Every, everybody's lethal here. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's, there's no. Oh well, we'll just let them go. The, oh, the, the cat launches itself and kind of avoids the um, uh, avoids the entanglement like it's smart and lands on top of this wagon. It then reaches down and is clawing at one of the men, uh, killing one of the men with his claws. That's us, my head. Chaga, Ooh, maybe we could just stay in here. Yeah, I, I, I wish that were a likely scenario where we're safe. I think it's just going to make things worse if we don't help. Somebody wants to open the door. Well... I suppose I could go out there and say hello to the shamblers. I can deal with the tiger. Jaga floats above the shamblers, just out of the reach of their of their tentacly grasp, and is going to channel negative energy to harm the living. He will exclude ghost rat, his own familiar, and grackle. Nice. He can exclude one, two, three, four, five people. So he, yeah, he excludes five. He's carrying that. Okay. Uh, he has his mace out. So 7d6 negative energy, 25 against the shamblers. He ends up killing a lot of like small plant life. Uh, some of the trees, uh, uh, branches wilt, uh, uh, the leaves <laughs> fall off. Man. How to make friends with elves. <laughs> and you notice a lot of the elven archers have their new target. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah, so first the will saves in the shambling mounds. Uh, there are four of them. The last one will be the injured one. They all fail, so they all take 25 damage. Chaka just did 100 damage to the shambling mounds. Ooh. <laughs> Bravo! Yeah, they all they all kind of turned wilty and idiolated. Uh, Sixty-nine. That one is almost destroyed. It's oozing and pussing, and oh, they smell rather bad. Why did you bring these horrible monsters? Uh, the Elsirian Slayers. They run up and it's and it looks like they drank like jump potions or something because they launch themselves through the air and and land on this wagon 
uh, and one of them uses the launch as sort of a uh, sort of a strike, uh, and with the oh, what are they wielding? With the elven curve blade, lops off one of the hired thugs' heads. Okay. You get the sense that these are not rank and file soldiers, uh, Barnabas. These, these are. Because maybe scary renegades of some sort. Uh, Mort, what are you doing? Uh, Mort is going to... Yeah, <laughs> what to strike? Where it's, where would it start? Um, you will fly out the door. Okay, there's a guard like, Help me! He's all covered in this tall grass, trying to get away. There's panicked horses beneath him. Ah, you're safer there. <laughs> uh, he will get this far well maybe i'll move over just for okay the, of... the, the, the cat turns its head and it's looking at you and uh, then he grows uh large the cat is also <sighs> wearing like studded leather uh it it re- kind of uh recoils from your growth in size yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> kitty, kitty. <laughs> All right, with its armor, it's got an AC of 21 with a spell that was previously cast on it. It's got an AC of 24 with a ring that it's wearing, an AC 25. Oh, yes, I get an extra attack action. Yep. 20 plus 20. Uh, double check, I think it's plus 23. What? Oh, you don't want this thing to pounce, Mark? No, I, I really, really, really <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh, all right, so that'll be, yeah, plus 24. AC 34. You you hit the really big cat in the side of the head with your club. Uh, plus, plus four damage. Two D six for forty seven points of damage. You injure the cat badly and it looks pissed off. It is not bloodied, however. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm coming, buddy. Alright, the Elsirian archers. They see a ghost flying around, it's poking at this thing, but there's a necromancer we weren't aware of. I think this back group of uh, of archers are attacking uh, Chaga. <clears throat> All right, uh, Chaga is a man. We are going to use our favored enemy, and we are going to use uh, a single. Uh, they yell something in Elven, which is Bane, the word Bane. And they're all going to use uh, mm. uh, human Bane arrows against Chaga. All right. Favorite enemy, human Bane, six shots. Plus one from above. That would be... Chaga's AC, flying around in his full plate with his tower shield out, is 32, with haste is 33. Yikes. He got hit by one arrow. (laughs) It's going to be a mean arrow, though. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be a mean arrow. Uh, All right, so the damage (laughs) from this arrow is 1d8 plus... Four plus two for favorite enemy plus two for uh, bane and then two d six for the bane. Does twenty points of damage to Chaga? Oh! Oh. All right, these three archers on the ground uh, are concerned with Mort clubbing the cat. They like the cat. Uh, 
Oh, that was their first attack. Now it's just the rain of regular arrows on Chaga. Um, that to hit drops by two and then another five. So they're at plus eights. I think they're just rolling to hit 20s on Chaga. So there are six of them. So 12 more arrows. <laughs> Chaga's like this bulky samurai <laughs> with hordes of arrows flying at him just uh, uh, sheafs of arrows oh why are they attacking me <laughs> he points his horrible mace <laughs> the horrible creeping uh, necromantic skull topped uh, uh, scepter at them I'll get you that's the spirit Chaga help me with these lettuce monsters first uh Lowe's is stabbing at the at the horrible <laughs> at the horrible shambling mounds. Uh, okay. Um and then these archers are unloading on Mort. Mort, they don't have gnome bane arrows, because why? Uh <laughs> yeah, you know. Although on a world with kobolds, that might be a thing. Yeah, perhaps. AC 31? Nope. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. And I, I guess their their remaining shots are roll for 20s. Oh, 20. Yeah, you're looking for 20s. There's a single 20 in there. I'll roll to confirm. It's not a crit. You get tagged for 5 damage. Okay. Ouch. Alright, so they stopped firing at, like, some of the hired thugs and end up firing at what are the true threats. Uh, the guards. The guards are all kind of struggling. There are some of them that are on benches, so they pull out their, their crossbows and they're trying to hack their way through it. There's a couple of them that are moderately competent that are driving your uh, wagon. Oh, one of them crits, a, uh, crits an elf. Nice. Yeah, one of the flying elves just got crit by a crossbow. With one bleed. <laughs> uh, unless you got a healing potion, takes you out of the fight. I don't. Sorry, it does. Okay, one, so one bleed will kill you eventually. <laughs> seven damage and a bleed. Uh, they fired the ones along the ground, and that elf does not drop grits his teeth against uh, against the wound the others are in complete panic ghost from the wagon top uh he yeah. says to junker see i told you we playing arrow tag <laughs> who's ghost gonna concentrate on well mort's got kitty then there's the two guys over here that are interesting oops these two guys are interesting. We're in the first uh, cart. Yep. And there's the druids. The which, elementals. Fine. Yeah, which look like air elementals, twisting it, uh, twisting boughs and causing leaves to fall from the autumn trees. I, I would say the problems would be these two guys. If you take them out of the fight. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ghost can rapid shot, then haste shot, then tertiary shot, then... Yeah, he's got basically one, two, well, he three, can use four haste, arrows. Well, well, he's got well, his move. He can use, instead of taking his tertiary, could be a move action to increase by four yep. and take a tertiary shot. Okay, so he's got two shots, a third. He'll take his move to aim with the fourth. Yep. Okay, so give me four d20s. Go ahead, Mario. Oh. Thirteen, sixteen, ew, one, and a twelve. Okay, the one. Uh, these warriors have AC uh, twenty-four. Ghost has a plus five to hit from whatever he usually has. Yeah, that's a twenty-one. So hit, hit, 
uh, needs to confirm the critical miss, and the last one would be at a Nine, minus... He rolled a 19 for the confirmation, so I don't think it's a critical miss. Minus 10 plus... He so, misses on the last one. It's okay. minus 10 plus 4. Yeah. So 6. So 21, 32 minus... Oh, no, he hit on the last one. Nice. Yeah, yeah I was just thinking, yeah. So three hits, not a crit. Uh, they have not protected themselves versus cold or fire. <laughs> oh, what the you, fuck? You want to roll this damage? Uh, yeah, sure. From one to so three hits would be three d six plus sixty six. Another sixty six plus. Uh, Four and then he didn't deadly aim and then it would be another four eight plus twenty four. Plus twenty four. Is that including the Bart song and? Yep. Fifty damage. <laughs> okay. He pepper. He peppers the nearest uh, uh, sword wielding renegade with with fiery and frosty arrows, which which harms him. Uh, he is bloodied from that attack. <laughs> He tries to twist away from that. Um, the Shambling Mounds. This one is stupidly reaching up towards Los, and he says that it tickles. Uh, these Shambling Mounds move right up to the wagon. They're kind of surrounding the wagon, and uh, one of them is reaching inside Grackle to grab at you. Yay. Uh, another one is reaching up to try to attack Junker, and the other one's reaching up to t try to attack Ghost. Uh, all three of you, because of where you're situated, uh, have cover, because the vines have to move around uh, things. So the first grab, add four to your AC. To my AC? Yeah, for cover. Or, C or CMD. Uh, no, they are trying to slam for... Oh, they are slam attacks? Okay. Yeah, the okay. yeah, nice. violent whipping of tentacles, and they're trying to grab a hold of things. Uh, I think all three of those attacks miss. So they shambled up to the wagon and are, are bumping into the wagon. The wagon's going all back and forth. And uh, uh, tentacles are waving into the wagon. It's horrible. It's It's a horrific thing. Uh, and this one's just simply waving its tentacles up at Los. Goros Thrym. Well, I guess we will stand, hop over, and put an axe through a renegade's head. He hits. Uh, let me just check a thing. Approximate strength would be that he's using a shitty axe. There is a bard song. Are you including the 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 folks into the bard song? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, nine, and then he was power attacking. It's probably something like a plus twelve or thirteen to damage right now. Whack. So stood up five foot step and they just heaved his axe into this slayer. The slayer is now is not concerned about getting grabbed so much. Fire sphere or flaming oh, uh, flaming sphere is yes, he will cast defensively a flaming sphere. He's got cover from the uh, from so the chambers, so he doesn't need to. But drop it on the fellow right in front of him. Yeah, let me let me grab one for you. Flaming spear. On which one? Uh, on the one right in front of Junker. It needs to make a reflex save uh, to avoid the fire. It doesn't like the fire. It fails. Okay. Uh, I think it's... Hang on. Is this greater or... 
Greater Flaming Sphere. That's what he's got. Uh, and I think that's 66. Nice. I think you are right. Yeah, 66. Um, creature that fails to save catches fire as well. 17 damage? Not a, well, yeah. Okay, uh, this thing right. is a little bit wet, and um, some of the moisture does absorb some of the fire damage, so it's till, it still takes 7 damage, um, and it's on fire, but the fire damage is not doing enough to get through its, uh, its resistance, so uh, it's smoking. Uh, it's doing something. Okay, it's but not... Not as much as you hoped. Yeah, all right. All right, the flying Elsirian druids see a spellcaster and two rat things on top of that wagon. Uh, this one, um, in its windy form, is going to cast a spell, which it dumps down on top of uh, on top of Ghost and Junker. <clears throat> it is a cylinder 10 foot radius and 40 feet high you notice that the elemental does something in its hands there's a spark of electricity as the cylinder turns from fire into electricity as you just got shock striked Okay. Uh, there's a column of electricity that goes down around the coach and sparks off, and she's also kind of catching, we're going to say, uh, this shambling mound and this shambling mound in the, uh, in the, uh, the shocking strike. Okay, okay. The shocking strike seems to invigorate the shambling mound. And both of them gain a temporary constitution. <laughs> that could have been worse. I'm liking the sound of that. <laughs> Mind you, it's good for them. They have an odd con. Okay. Now, no the, save or uh, anything? No, the reflex save. There is a reflex save against the... Yep. Uh, against the augmented flame strike. Uh, your save, Junker. There we go. Reflex. Oh, holy crap. Uh, plus 17, plus 19. So, 33 for Junker. Okay, Junker evades. Yep. Then Ghost. Ghost. You've got a plus 1 from Haze, plus 2 from, uh, plus 2 from Good Hope. Saves are. Do you know what Max made us realize last game? Good Hope actually affects your initiative, because it affects ability checks. And in the book, it says initiative, an initiative is, is a dexterity check. Oh. So we haven't been playing with Good Hope. I'm sure we kind of like went we poo pooed that a long time ago. And, and yeah, we, we, well, we especially with the way we do things now, because I was like, wow. We well, there would all. With yeah, well, there's a there's a column in the initiative sheet that handles yeah. this. So, um, just a question of what does it go up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this fight, when did it go up? Did it go up after? It went up before, or... but I don't really. I'm not. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to change the outcome. Yep. Okay, so uh, we need a save from Ghost. Ghost. G20 plus... Junker hangs off the side of the uh, the wagon. Ghost twenty-eight. Ghost tumbles out of the way, and then the last save we need is for the rat. Oh, yeah. oh shit! Uh, the rat has a plus thirteen. Uh, if it was included in haste, I don't know if it was or not. Uh, it was not. Okay. So plus fifteen. Well, I don't know. A ghost cast it. I don't know what he. Uh, haste. So there are Ooh, rat. one, two, Failed three, ish. four, five, six. He would have got the rat and Duckin. So yeah, all of them got haste. All of them got it? Okay. So uh, I rolled a 19. All right, uh, so plus 16. 
the DC of this spell is they've got wisdom 18 so DC 18 okay so, uh, with the with the haste it's a uh, 19 okay so. so it evades yeah all right so it squeak healed the shambling mounds a little bit that's all it did all right so that was that Drudus and then this Drudus sees you beating up her tagger Ooh. She comes zipping in. She's she's kind of behind the tiger. Okay. Like up up a little bit more with the with a five step you probably could reach her. Yep. And I will. And You notice that this um, this Arab elemental creature, kind of vaguely elven shaped, uh, feet that kind of trail into uh, into nothingness uh, or infinity, um, is carrying a scroll tube. She had she pulls out a scroll, or she had a scroll in her hand. She she flew down and she casts that scroll, which turns the dire tiger into a huge dire tiger oh shit oh, oh. <sighs> get him the the scroll burns up and and wisps away as an animal growth spell was cast that's dangerous yeah Greco. okay uh I will leave these mounds to you. Mort needs my help. Uh, I'm gonna acrobatics around the kitty. Okay, are you flying with your broom? Uh, yes. Okay, so you, yeah, give me Let's an acrobatics around the kitty. Now, can I use my my uh, spider climb to spider climb myself to the broom? <laughs> Yeah, that, that might help, but the, the broom is still a, a not perfect flying device. Thing. Right. Yeah. And so, it's a ride that I'm so, doing. Yeah, so this this round you're fine. This round you fly to the kitty and you're use, you're using it to uh, to get around. So uh, fly. And, yeah, and then give me your acrobatics or, yeah, your acrobatics check to get around the cat. 18. 18. Uh, does good hope help for this? It does. 18, 20. All right. And this thing's strength just got increased, so the CMD for the cat is 35. Ouch. 27. Okay, it will bite you. Oh, this is all defensive, sorry. Go Holy ahead. shit. Uh, 20, and then it got big. Oh, no. 24. AC uh, rolls a 3. AC 25. <laughs> <laughs> Miss. <laughs> it tries to bite you. And Miss. misses. Alright, you fly to the other side of the cat. You are flanking it now. Alright. Alright, kitty kitty. Here, yeah, kitty 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 kitty. No, you don't want to be in that thing's jaws. And my battery is... I do not. Oops. What the hell? D twenty plus eighteen plus flank. Twenty three. Okay, its AC was twenty five before it got big. It lost. Uh, it minus, lost minus two to dex. dex and minus one for size, so it lost three in its AC. So its AC twenty five became AC twenty three. Does it get any 22. AC natural armor bonus for increasing in size, though? Give me a second. I'd just be surprised if it didn't. It it does not. It's not. Oh. It's not. I a... think it's just. Yeah, I think it's just. You you lose some dex, but gain a shitload of con and strength. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the plus eight strength plus four con. Holy oh, shit! 
So you hit it once, but, but then it, it, it is trying to claw at you. Oh, uh, you go fuck, scrambling back. Fuck, that's, fuck, a, fuck, fuck. that's a critical miss. No, no, miss. I just killed myself. No, no, miss. Oh, fuck. No, I'll probably just kill myself. Seriously, DC 20 or lose next standard. Or move action. Uh, I'm on a broom. What the fuck's going on right now? Okay, so just give me a dexterity check. You get a plus two because of good hope. Six, seven, eight. Oh, wow. Okay, standard. Uh, so this is how many um, actions you'll lose in this system.